Continuing our series, Absolute. Amen. Absolute. Uh, free from imperfection. Complete. Perfect. It is a word that describes God. Amen. And of course, last week we talked about who we should vote for. Amen. And we should vote God in our life each and every day. Amen. Because he has absolute power. He has absolute control. And no matter what we go through, he is still in control. Amen. Amen. It didn't matter who got elected on Tuesday. What mattered is God is still in control. Amen. Amen. And today we want to talk about don't forget. Amen. Don't forget. And we're going to be coming from Psalm 103, verses 1 through 5. Amen. And we'll be reading from the New King James Translation. <coughs> Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits, who forgives your iniquities, who heals all your diseases, yeah. who redeems your life from destruction, who crowns you with loving kindness and tender mercies, who satisfies your mouth with good things, so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. May God add a blessing to the hearing and reading of his word. Have you ever forgotten something important and no matter how hard you tried, you just couldn't remember what it was? I've forgotten answers to tests. I've, when learning how to spell my name, amen, I've forgotten how to spell my name when I was younger. I've forgotten my home telephone number before. I've forgotten people's names at times. I've even forgotten how old I am sometimes, amen. amen. This morning, I want to encourage you not to forget about the benefits of the Lord. Amen. amen. I found some things online that would help us to remember if you would use them. Amen. Sometimes it's good to write things down. Amen. That's one way that I remember people's names is I'll write their name down. The communication cards that we use, of course, we use those to gather information about people who, who uh, come and, and be our guests on any certain day. But uh, that's also a way for me to remember somebody's name. Amen man is by having that written down. Amen. One thing that we can do is keep things together that we have written down. Amen. That's one of my problems is I'll write it down and put it somewhere and forgot where I put it. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Well, another thing we can do to help remember is to maintain good health. Eat healthy foods, get enough sleep, get enough exercise. All of those things would help in our memory. Another thing we can do is record our thoughts. Amen. If we're driving down the street, we can't pick up an ink pen. Amen. And start writing. And you shouldn't be texting while you're driving. Amen. But Amen. Uh, a lot of us have those smartphones and, and they have a way to record. Amen. Your voice while you're driving. Another thing that you can do is to call yourself. If you know you want to do something when you get home, call yourself and leave a message so that when you check it later, you'll remember exactly what you want to do. Another thing we can do is just believe in yourself. Be motivated. Have the right attitude. I, I can remember attitude. Amen. Something else that I do, I, I'll set my alarm on my on my phone, amen, to help me remember things, amen. I know that's something Kizzy does to help her remember who to call on certain days or remember doctor's appointments, amen. But in Psalm 103, David does something different to help himself remember. Mm -hmm. David talks to himself. Mm -hmm. I know it sounds crazy, but you know, there's scientific evidence that suggests talking to yourself actually benefits you. Mm -hmm. A recent study published in the Quarterly Journal of Experimental Psychology conducted a series of experiments to discover whether talking to oneself can help when searching for particular objects. 
In the first experiments, participants were shown 20 pictures of various objects and asked to find a particular one. In some trials, participants saw a text label telling them what the object uh, was that they should find, such as search for a teapot. In other trials, the same subjects were asked to search again while actually saying the word to themselves. It was found that speaking to themselves helped people find objects more quickly. In verse 1, David expresses intense emotion. He says, bless the Lord, O my soul, yeah. and all that is within me, bless his holy name. Yeah. We are creatures of emotion. We get happy, we get sad, we get frustrated, we get angry, we get depressed. We are emotional beings. Yeah. This is one reason that we cannot make major decisions in life based upon how we feel about something or someone. Yeah. Because we might feel one way today and then wake up tomorrow and feel the exact opposite. Uh -huh. Amen. And then in verse 2, he makes a transition in his declaration. He says, bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not his benefits. Uh -huh. David is talking to himself. I'm reminded of a time when David made a mistake. He had led his men into battle, leaving the women and the children defenseless. And when they returned, they found that their homes had been destroyed and their families had been taken away captive. They all wept at the tragedy and the men began to point their finger at David. 1 Samuel 30 and 6, David says, uh, the Bible says, now David was greatly depressed oh, yes. or distressed. For the people spoke of stoning him yeah. because, of, uh, because the soul of the people were grieved. Every man for his sons and his daughters. But David strengthened himself in the Lord. Amen. His God. Some translations say, but David encouraged himself. David is encouraging himself to remember. Actually, he is encouraging himself, don't forget. Amen. And this is what we have to do sometimes is encourage ourselves to don't forget. Amen. Don't forget who forgives all your iniquities. Amen. That's the first thing. Don't forget who forgives all your iniquities. Amen. David begins by reminding us that God forgives all our iniquities. Iniquity is sin of rebellion, meaning that you knew something was wrong and you did it anyway. Uh -huh. However, it's not surprising that he starts with forgiveness because this is the foundation for everything else. Our, our greatest problem is the guilt that we feel because of our sin. And our greatest need is to know the forgiveness from the Lord. Note that David says God forgives all our iniquity, all of our sin. That's good news. Some of us have messed up big time. And we have messed up over and over and over again. If we've done some dumb things repeatedly, even after we promised the Lord, we would never do it again. I'm glad the word all is included because that means God intends to forgive even my sins in the future. Amen. That's the first thing. Don't forget who forgives your iniquity. The, th the second thing is don't forget who heals all your diseases. Uh -huh. After doctors and nurses have done all that they can do and after we have used the latest technology and taken the newest drugs, healing must come from the Lord. That's why we pray for the sick that they may be healed by medicine or, or healed by the surgeon or by some other course of treatment that they may find healing also through prayer or a miracle from the Lord. Amen. All of these things are possible and they are not mutually exclusive. If you were sick 
and are now healthy, give thanks to the Lord. Amen. If you had cancer and it's in remission, give thanks to the Lord. If you Amen. nearly died in an accident but somehow survived, yeah. give thanks to the Lord. And remember that healing in this life is limited and temporary. But Jesus uh, he'll give us our resurrected body where sickness will not overcome them. Amen. 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 So don't forget who heals you. Also, thirdly, don't forget who redeems your life from destruction. Who redeems your life from destruction. To redeem means to rescue from danger in a time of trouble. The destruction refers to death itself. You may have been through things in life that have killed others, but God has preserved you for this very moment and has protected you every step of the journey. So don't forget who redeems your life from destruction. Next church, we, we, we should not forget who crowns us with loving kindness and tender mercies. Don't forget who crowns you with loving kindness and tender mercies. Uh, it's, it's the loyal, unending, unchanging love of God toward us. It paints the picture of God heaping his, his blessings upon us, amen, heaping his blessings up and then pouring them on us, amen. 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 Mercy implies failure and defeat. Tender mercy means he knows what we are going through and he meets us where we are. Oh, yes, he does. If we were to receive what we truly deserve from God, we wouldn't stand a chance. But instead of justice, God instead of justice, God gives us tender mercy. Oh yes. So don't forget who crowns you with loving kindness uh -huh. and tender mercy. Next church. Don't forget who satisfies your mouth with good things. Uh -huh. Don't forget who satisfies your mouth with good things. The text says he satisfy you with good. That means that there is nothing on earth that can satisfy us deeply except God himself. Amen. The good in verse 5 comes from God and, and, and nothing that, that comes from God, amen, is bad. Uh -huh. So what we receive from God is good things. And what God supplies us should satisfy us. Uh -huh. Amen. We can search all over this earth for the things that, 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 that the world can offer us. But what God gives us, what God allows us to partake in, satisfies us. Amen. Uh -huh. People look for satisfaction in life from all, times of th all kinds of things. Amen. Sex, drugs, alcohol. Alcohol, amen. But the Lord is the only one who truly satisfies our mouth with good things. Amen. That's right. Amen. Don't be confused by the world offering you money or status or promotion or some earthly prosperity if we will only serve Him. Oh, yes. But the emphasis is not on what we possess but what possesses us. Amen. Here David speaks of satisfaction deeper than anything the world can offer. Oh, yeah. So don't forget who satisfies your mouth with good things. Next church, don't forget so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. Don't forget so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. A so that statement connects two sentences or clauses. What comes before so that is an independent clause, meaning it stands alone. However, what comes after so that is a dependent clause, meaning that in order for it to be true, the independent clause needs to be true first. 
In order for us to understand what is at stake here, we have to understand something about an eagle. Amen? Amen. An eagle, once it reaches maturity, it, it sheds or it molts, amen, every year. It, its beak keeps growing and growing so that even if it gets damaged, soon it looks good as new. You cannot tell the age of an eagle once it has reached its adult stage. It seems their strength does not diminish. Amen. Their color does not fade. They are one of the longest living birds on the earth with a life expectancy of over 25 years. And some have been known to live in captivity 50 years. In other words, an eagle does not look like what it's been through in life. Uh -huh. The Bible says, bless, affectionately, grateful, praise, amen. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and forget not his benefits so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. Amen. Our problem is that sometimes we let this life weigh us down because we don't praise the Lord enough and we forget about his benefits. What we need to do is to learn how to talk to ourselves and encourage ourselves like David did. When life get hard and it seems like you're all alone, you better say to yourself, Yay, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Yes. When people make you mad and try to test your faith, you better talk to yourself and say, Greater is he that is within me Amen. than he that is in the world. Yes. Yes. When you are living for the Lord and you start to feel a little tired, you better yes. talk to yourself and say, Jesus said over in Matthew chapter 11, verses 28 and 30, come to me, all you who labor yes. and are heavy burdened, yes. and I will give you rest. Yes. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart. And you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and forget not his benefits so that your youth will be renewed like the eagles. The eagle is strong. The eagle is steadfast, uh, which means overcoming. The eagle is soaring. Something else about the eagle, when a storm is coming, he doesn't run from the storm, amen? He doesn't try to get away from it. What he does is he faces the storm and begins to fly at the storm. He will use the storm's wind to lift him higher. Yeah. Once he finds the wind of the storm, the eagle uses the raging storm to lift him above the clouds. Yeah. This gives the eagle the opportunity to glide and rest his wings by overcoming the storm. Yeah. The eagle is strong, steadfast, soaring. Draw your strength from the Lord each and every day. You wake up so that you can be strong like the eagle. Oh, yeah. Remain steadfast in the Lord so that you can overcome the adversities in this life. Soar in the Lord so that what knocks somebody else down, you can use to take you higher. Oh, yeah. Do y'all remember the experiment that I talked about at the beginning of the message? Amen, about remembering those items, amen, and talking to yourself. <clears throat> well, they also did a follow-up experiment. In the follow-up experiment, participants performed a virtual shopping task in which they saw photographs of items commonly found on supermarket shelves. And they were asked to find as quickly as possible all instances of a particular item. For example, 
participants were asked to find all the bags of apples or all the bottles of Diet Coke. Here too, uh, there was an advantage to speak in the name of the object when participants were looking for very familiar products. For example, saying Coke when looking for Coke helped, whereas saying speed stick when looking for speed stick deodorant actually slowed people down. Familiar is the key. It was easy for them to find what was familiar to them. The depth of our soul cannot bless or praise the Lord unless we are in relationship with him. Are you familiar with God? Amen. And better yet, is God familiar with you? Oh, yes. Amen. We can't forget the benefits of being in relationship with the Lord. This is why he can crown us with that loving kindness and tender mercy because of the relationship that he has established with us and that we have established with him. Uh -huh. Amen. God is absolute. Yes, he is. Amen. He's perfect. There's no imperfection in him. He's complete. And he will do just what he said he will do. So don't let yourself get discouraged. Don't let yourself get off track. Amen. Sometimes you just got to talk to yourself. Amen. And help yourself to not forget what God has done for you. Because if he's done it in the past, he'll do it for you today. What he has done for others, he can do for you. Amen. So you just stand strong. Amen. The world might think you're crazy when you're talking to yourself, but you talk to yourself and encourage yourself in the Lord. But remain familiar, remain in fellowship with the Lord. Amen. There's people who I went to high school with. I've been out of high school a few years, a couple of years. Amen. And I run into them and they look familiar, but I don't really know where I know them from. Amen. That's because we haven't been in fellowship since high school. Amen. And when we become out of fellowship with the Lord, amen, not that God, uh, 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 you know, technically will look at us and be unfamiliar with us, but we haven't been in fellowship with him. Amen. Uh -huh. Some stranger come knocking on my door. Amen. I ask the door, well, I'm, I'm such and such. Oh, I have no idea who you are. <laughs> Amen. I ain't letting you in my house. Amen. Because I've been unfamiliar with them. Yeah. But we have to remain familiar with God. We have to remain in fellowship with the Lord. Amen. If we're going to take advantage of all those those benefits. Okay. Amen. And we've got to praise him for what he has already done. Okay. Amen. Amen. And we got to continue to talk to ourselves so that we don't forget. Oh, yes. Amen. As we stand today, I don't know what you are going through. I don't know what you are dealing with, but I do know that God is able, amen, to do just what he said. Amen, he will do. Amen, he will forgive all our iniquities. Amen, he will heal all our diseases. Amen, he does shower us or crown us with loving kindness and tender mercies. Amen, God will do just what he said he would do so that, amen, so that, our youth will be renewed like the eagles. Oh, yes, Amen. God allows us to go through things in life so that it will take us higher in him. Oh, yes. Amen. And that's why Paul can write to the, to, the, to the Romans. Amen. In Romans 8 and 28. For all things work to the good of those who love the Lord and are called according to his purpose. Amen. So we've got to face those storms of life and allow them to make us stronger. Amen. Allow them to make us go higher in the Lord. So that when it's all said and done, we won't look like what we've been through. 
Uh -huh. Amen. Amen. People come into the church and they assume that we've had it all together our whole life. They assume we've been saved since we stepped out our mother's womb. They assume uh -huh. that everything is hunky-dory. Yeah. But they don't know what you have been through. Yeah. Amen. Because you don't look like what you've been through. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. So you've got to keep getting your strength from the Lord. Yeah. Amen. You've got to keep overcoming the adversities of this life. Yeah. You've got to keep soaring higher and higher yeah. in the Lord. Yes, yeah. Amen. Because you won't look like what you've been through. Yeah. Amen. They don't understand it because you're walking around talking to yourself. They think you're crazy and out of your mind, but you have a purpose to fulfill. You have a destiny to walk in. Oh, yeah.